Welcome back to the Mastering Rune Terra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Rune Terra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Rune Terra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Rune Terra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Ruterra. Welcome back to the Mastering Ruterra podcast with Jay and Bay. We have a fantastic show for you to wrap up the year. I can't believe it's going to be 2022 uh, in just a few hours. I mean, some places in the world it actually already is 2022, which is nuts. Uh, before we get into everything, though, we have to thank uh, all of our patrons. Thank you guys so much for all the support you've given us over this year. Uh, you know, it's allowed us to hold big tournaments uh, at the beginning of the year and continue putting on this podcast for you guys all year long. We're actually coming up uh, on our one-year anniversary yeah, fun, pretty huh? soon. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, we'll definitely have some fun stuff for you guys. And then also helping us launch our website that we launched uh, three weeks ago, masterconventure.com, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, which has been blowing up. We're super excited about it. We actually absolutely love it. So thank you guys so much for helping us get to where we're at now. Um, and also a little bit about some promo stuff. Speaking of tournaments and websites and such, um, our third qualifier for the $5,000 championship tournament that's coming up. Uh, is this Sunday, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. You can find all the details on masterconventure.com. Go to the 5K Championship uh, link up at the top in the header. And all the rest of January as well. There'll be three more qualifiers. There's a points race going on. And then at the end of January will be our big 5K Championship, which is going to be uh, on Swim's, Swim's Twitch stream yeah. on, on his Twitch. Yeah, which is going to be super fun. Um, okay. Paid too. Yeah, they're five hundred dollar tournaments. Uh, I forget about that, which are also like nothing to sneeze yeah. at. Um, and also get some points to go qualify for. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about uh, the current meta a little bit, our experiences on the ladder, uh, a little bit about tournaments, the upcoming ones, some that we played in recently. Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how our year has gone in Rutera and our goals and stuff headed forward. Um, with all that said, though, Bay, welcome back to the podcast. I feel like it's been forever. It's been like how long? Yeah. How has it been a it's month? It's been almost a month, I think. I haven't been in California for like almost half the weeks of the last few months. Yeah. 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 You guys live in California for those of you who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there in yeah. years, bro. Um, yeah, it's been a very busy couple months. So excited to like get back buckled down. Some serious room terror stuff going on. You know, we got like we got a lot of big stuff going. Not so much for like there are stuff that's happening for room terror. You know, like new set, big balance patch coming next week on the fifth. Yeah. Um, but like big stuff's happening for us, uh, like you and I, right? And that's obviously more exciting. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about that probably closer to the end of this podcast, and then um probably a lot more uh when we have our one year anniversary for the podcast which is coming up yeah this is number 46 i believe six weeks? so we've got like six weeks yeah six weeks will be out of year Isn't that's that crazy? wild so crazy yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna be fun to go down memory lane yeah. uh when we get to that you know what's even uh but a first year ago, we didn't know what? each other exactly one year ago we did not know each other it's pretty funny right? yeah that's crazy. It's wild. And, and we still have not met in real life. Not yet, no, because your borders. Which is kinda... ridiculous. Oh, it's my border yeah, now? Border. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on the other side. Um, That's right. We're going to build a wall. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> it is, it is crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, who else is different? Um, yeah, it's wild to think about. Uh, I don't know, like, I just forget about it. Like, and although, like, the rest of the Master Guitar team, too, actually, anyone I've ever yeah, met in Rutera, in I didn't have any other met. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Crazy. And you've, you've met some people now from traveling. Have, yeah. I've met absolutely yeah. zero. We were talking about it off uh, before we started recording, though. That first meetup is going to be wild. I mean, it's going to be you and I getting absolutely trashed 
and just going so drunk. nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a bunch of like, you know, card game players. Like, oh, hey, it's nice to meet you. And we're like, oh, yeah, it's like oh, shots, it's just shots, like taking shots, shots their hand in the mouth. <laughs> it's giving a good time. Mm-hmm. Don't miss it. Um, okay. So first up, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the current meta, which is uh, an interesting one. I've been enjoying it quite a bit since the uh, hot patch. Yeah. Is that what's called? The hot Hot fix. Picks? Hot patch? Hot fix. Um, I, you know, found my way onto Ari Kennen. Absolver. Rode that train. The Absolver version. Yeah, I tried the Go Hard version. wasn't loving it. It's less good. Absolver version. Yeah, yeah Absolver version I like. I like one Absolver, though. I like I, 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 most people are on two. Most I people like, are on two and one. I like the second Absolver, not just for the finishing potential, but it protects you from pings early game, which I really like. You know, like, a lot yeah. of times you attack with Ari and Kennen slash Droplet. And they're going to throw something at it. And if you have the pump spell, like it just puts you in a really good spot. Yeah, I like the card uh, for sure. I very much dislike missing on my allegiance. Yeah, triggers. that feels pretty bad. And I've, bad. I've just found that like I didn't need, like if I hit allegiance, like it was just winning. Mm-hmm. So like that was, I was losing more by missing allegiance yeah. than I was like ever being like, oh, I don't have another absolver. Like I really needed that to. Close out this game. That just wasn't happening. Ari was like finishing games a lot for me. Mm. Uh, so anyway, wrote that up. That was like a great time. Uh, and then I just sat on my 391 points. I think I have currently LP just yeah. chilling because I did not feel like I had a very good handle on the meta, which is, uh, it seems very like polarizing. It seems like there's lots of matchups that are just like either very good or very bad kind of across the board. So I'm just chilling, waiting for the patch to kind of come out. Yeah. Uh, what's you played a lot more though? You've played a lot of the other play, decks, okay, which so, I haven't. Yeah, mine story is a bit interesting for me, probably not for most people, but like I was gone, right? Um, Ari got released, whatever. I'm just gonna call it the Ari set. Ari got released, um, and I played it for a few days, maybe a week. I don't remember actually when it was released. Uh, but then I was gone for over a week. So, yeah, on vacation. Yeah, I was on vacation with my family for Christmas. So what I had to do was stockpile a bunch of YouTube videos. So I played it a ton, but not with any specific deck because I had to go through and play all these different decks to make videos, right? And then scheduled the videos out while I was gone. I come back, and I came back, uh, like, basically Friday. But then it was Christmas Eve Christmas, which I spent at my mom's with her side of the family and didn't get to play at all. So I didn't get to play... I didn't get to start playing until like Monday, like a week ago or something. No, yeah, like this Monday, like really playing, right? Because I'd like record oh. for my video, and then I had stuff to do. Um, you know, I'd stream yeah. or whatever, and then I had stuff to do, and so yeah, I didn't really start playing till like Monday, maybe Tuesday, probably Monday. And um, I shot from Diamond Four up to like Masters, and then it's been weird. It's been weird since. Um, my favorite deck in the format is Go Hard Ari. It is unfortunately, in my opinion, not as good as the Absolver version. Um, it's just clunkier. Go Hard sound is good. It's very good in the mirror, which is great. But, like, yep. it suffers into other matchups. Um, and there's honestly just, like, less Ari on the ladder than you'd think, uh, considering it's, like, one of the best decks. So I've been playing a lot of that. The Ari decks, I've been playing a lot of TF Nami, really trying to learn that deck. And then I've actually been playing a lot of Darkness. Uh, and this was the lineup I brought to the Runeterra Academy League. We'll talk about that in a bit. But the problem I'm having is that I'm just like, I'm basically at 150 LP, and then I just move up and down 50 LP. Just over and over and over. Again. Mm-hmm. I'm just bouncing between 1 and 200. And I'm like not making any yeah. headway. Yeah. Well, it's really hard to get that, whatever it is, like two wins, one loss, to like yeah. barely climb when you know, the, the meta is so kind of polarized like that. And there's just like, oh, hey, like you're playing Ari Kennedy you're up against spiders, like cool, good luck. Uh, or you're playing, you're playing spiders, you're up against like, I don't know, any of the good Darkness. decks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yep. And yeah. Um, and a lot of the old decks also, I rotated through them, trying things like, I don't know, um, Plunder. Yeah, just not quite as hot, but still crushes some stuff. Yeah. I like, yeah. Still I, strong I, yeah. I lost to it uh-huh. the other day. Thralls, try that, meh. Um, oh my god, I was telling you the story, but I lost to Thralls with Ari Kennen 
Absolver, which is like a fantastic matchup for Ari Kenyon. I lost to it twice uh, in a row. I was heated, man. Uh, one time I lost it because I didn't draw any of my 9-1 drops, Kinku Wayfinder, or Shadow Assassin until turn 11. So I... I why are you so greedy? Why do you, why do you have to have the cards that do stuff by turn eleven? Like just uh, just, just hang yeah, out. Yeah, just cast homecoming on your R. Stun some stuff. And, um, I <laughs> sat there and took my Navori conspirators and bounced them. <laughs> just like play Navori conspirator to bounce con Navori conspirator, bounce, bounce, bounce to level up my Ari. But the problem was I'm still not doing anything because like what I bounced Navori conspirator with my Ari. What am I gonna bounce out Ari? Like I had nothing else. It was so. Do your opponent just have like ten cards in hand? I was just super confused. Like I would kill any of your stuff if yeah, like you had stuff to any. kill. Yeah, I mean they <laughs> got... they were just kind of doing their thralls thing. And I was just like, yeah, I, I have at least three homecomings yeah. and nothing to bounce. Oh my god. Yeah, the the meta is a really strange place in my opinion. Um, things are just kind of like a little all over the place. It's really hard to kind of nail down what's actually like. So like, we have Ari Kennen, yeah, and we have like. Twisted Fate. I think, uh, yeah, I think Twisted Fate Nami Shelf Nami. is the best deck in the format. Um, I think it's really hard to play. So I think Ari Kennen will outperform TF Nami. That's my two cents. Yeah, I, yeah, I still don't get it. Um, like, theoretically, I'm like, I could see how the deck's good, but whenever I play it, I lose. It's really uh, hard. And it's not like, it's really hard. yeah, yeah. It, I don't know. My opponent just ends up doing something that I'm like, I have no answer yeah, for that, and I can't race it, and I can't, yeah. Um, so, but those X do seem quite good and powerful. And then you have, like, I don't know, everything else. You got, like, spiders. That's, like, not really a deck, but it, like, counters those decks. Spiders, darkness, um, yeah, and then Pantheon, I'm not really sure about where that, like, lies either. I, I at first I thought it was a joke, and then I lost to it quite a bit. It was like, okay, there's, the, the list got better, and the players got better as well. Um, it does seem a little high rolly to me, though. Seems yeah, like sometimes get they get, like, Exactly, like, you know, like, yeah. do they hit Spell Shield or not? Yeah. That's pretty The deck important. without Zenith Blade, like, super struggles. Yeah. Just doesn't do anything. Um, and then Darkness. Talk to me about Darkness I like a little Darkness bit. a lot at the moment. Um, I think it's, like, pretty good into the Ari Cannon piles. I'm running three Withering Whales. Um, but I like it against a lot of the other stuff. I like it against Pirates. I like it against Spiders. It struggles against Pantheon. It's, like, one of its worst matchups. Um, and Bandle Tree, which thankfully no one's playing on ladder right now. Because that matchup's abysmal. Um, but yeah, Darkness, I, I, I like it. Uh, it's gonna probably be a deck in my tournament lineups. Well, I say, I would say for a while, but like, we don't know what's gonna change, right? Everything could change. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was something I wanted to like, kind of talk about was not just like what happened to me on ladder, but like why I was pushing so hard on ladder. Uh, cause I've been playing ladder like six to eight hours a day right now for the last like granted three days right like tuesday wednesday thursday still it's a lot that's still probably more that's probably more than i've played the whole season yeah yeah uh but then i play two to three hours on stream an hour for youtube right so like only half of the time is really mine uh but still it's that's more ladder than i normally play and the plan was to jump up to four or five hundred lp and then chill and then work on a smurf account that way I could play whatever I wanted when the patch came live and practice for tournaments and stuff. Um, that way I'm safe at seven and two. But like, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. Like, I'm just, I'm just not moving. I think what I need to do, because I've been bouncing between the three decks that I was listing before and playing for YouTube is um, my YouTube video for tomorrow is going to be a different kind. It's not going to have any gameplay in it. I talked to you about this bit. Um, and then I need to, for the next few days, record probably just on the Smurf account. Um, and really just like pick one deck and just play that one deck. Just play Ari Kenan. Himself. Yeah. Just play. It should probably just be, it should probably just be Ari Kenan. It's probably just be Ari. Or maybe. Yeah. The one. But, um, also I wonder if there's like an Ari Kenan deck out there that could like slot in some Ida Dragons and have a better Pirates, yeah. Spiders match. I've seen Spiders a Cause lot. that used to be, it used to be a thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was like, uh, Drizzos version with like the gifts, but then you have to cut Conspirators and like Conspirators really good. Yeah, really like conspirator. So I don't think I'll do that, but somebody to consider. I was looking at some other options. I was like, what splash could I possibly make? Because Absolver is not like set in stone, right? I could play something else. Yeah. What about the? There's also the new deck that uh, blew up like the last day or two. It's uh, what Lulu. Oh, the Lulu, the Lulu Fizz. Fizz. Yeah, Yordle and Arms deck. Yeah, Yordle and Arms. Strong. Incredibly strong deck. Uh, basically, just vomits out. 
yordles and stuff. It plays the PNZ version, so it's like Boom Baboons. You know, that way you have like the Boom Baboon Chomper Lulu package. Uh, and then, yeah, you play Yordle Arms, and it's super, super strong. I just don't enjoy that kind of deck. And if I don't enjoy the deck, I get tilted and frustrated um, when I lose because I'm only playing to win. Because I don't. Sometimes when you win, too. I, I do get frustrated when I win, too. Yeah. I see. So I just avoid those kind of decks. Like on ladder. Yeah. You have yeah. seen it. Yeah, um, like a Zerelia. It's like Zerelia. Yeah. Like, oh, we won, I guess. Ugh, like, sucks, man. Yeah. We're not recording. We're not, we're not releasing this video. Um, anyways, but long story short, though, the meta will be changing quite a bit. Because uh, currently, it seems like elusive ish decks, decks that beat them, decks that beat those decks. Yeah. And then, like, back around. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for stuff to change. Uh, the tournament scene, though, talk to me about because you played our, uh, our tournament team, by the way, 8 0 currently in Runeterra Academy. Yep. Me, uh, you, tournament. Jason Sensational, and Kever. Yeah, to be specific, no What Am I, no Henneke, no Ikado. Those guys are in no Ikado. They're in other teams doing less good. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't think they did, they didn't name themselves Master Gutierrez Pro Team Two or anything, did they? They were just like some other. We are not as good yeah. as those guys. They they were on um, team before we had decided to even play it. Yeah, they didn't want us. They got picked fine. up real quick. It's cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have not played a lot of the any tournaments recently though. What does the meta look like? And because there's two big tournaments, for anyone that doesn't know. Saturday, there is a charity tournament, a hundred dollar prize pool being run by Max Got the Tracks. Uh, and Sunday is our tournament, obviously the qualifier. So two big tournaments happening this weekend. What are you thinking uh, going into this weekend? What do you expect will be popular? What do you what have you seen be good? Because like I don't know from the tournaments that we ran already, which I guess technically different format. Um, the the other RA tournaments I played in. Just like it seems like nothing had been flushed out yet. Flushed. Like people weren't flushed out. Flush. It's not flushed out. No. Why would you flush it out? That doesn't make any sense. Because you gotta get rid of it. But that doesn't. No. But you want it flushed to be flushed out. Flushed. Be built and finished. No. That makes more sense. Yeah. Mm. It was something new every day. Yep. Um. So flushed out. So a lot of people had brought the new decks because they were you know afraid of throwing stuff down. So I assume we'll see. A decent amount of Kennen Ari. Ari. Yeah. yeah. Um I expect it to be the most popular deck. Probably. Yeah. There's just, everything turn everything changes when you go to the tournament meta. Yes. Because you can like start targeting stuff like much easier. Mm. Um so I would be surprised to see some aggro lineups for sure. Try to try to go after I was gonna say a lot of aggro at the RA tournament. Pirates and spiders was kind of everywhere. And so was Draven Rumble Burn. Hmm. Yeah, like I say, I just don't like those decks or that strategy or whatever. But yeah. if there's just not a lot of Lee running around, yeah, oh my, could God. be the time. I'd rather you shoot me in the leg than I have to bring Lee into a tournament right now. Yeah, it's not not well positioned, hey. No, you know what's so funny? Uh, I brought this up. I think like yesterday on stream, is that if you have people make a tier list for tournaments, the ones I see on Twitter all day, they have Lee Sin at tier one or S tier or whatever every single time even when he's like unplayable because this is what's happened this is what happened enough people will go play aggro we'll go play and spiders and pirates yeah. once again it's like oh, i gotta get lee in there lee. gonna farm yeah. these people but like <laughs> darkness vandal tree ari tree tf nami these matchups are miserable miserable yeah dex are either playing bounce or mini morph or some other way to do it. Or alter, alternate win conditions. Yeah, alternate win conditions you can't deal with. Yeah. It's a bad yeah. time to be a Lee Sin gamer. Yeah, it's funny how quickly those things will change. Uh, I'd imagine we'll still see a decent amount of stuff like Darkness, Tree, yeah. some, some um, Plunder. Well, so what do you... Come back. It's a very popular deck yeah. three. It's very, it's very good deck. Yeah. It's very powerful. Um, especially I like it in best of three also, because there's almost, it's hard to have a, I think a lineup of three decks that like Plunder can't be good into one of them. Yeah, exactly. and, and like, and even then it's just flip a coin to get there, you know, like it's still just so powerful. Like I've been thralls before, like no big deal. Um, yeah, decks, decks, very powerful. What are you thinking of bringing? Um, uh, so I brought 
Um, go hard Ari, because I wanted Edge in the Mirror. My plan was to beat the Ari Ken Index, mm -hmm. basically. I wanted to. I wanted the luxury of not having to ban Ari Kennen, and I wanted to feel okay into it. So I brought Ari Kennen, go hard. I brought Darkness with Triple Withering Whale in seven pings. Um, and I brought TF Nami. TF Nami, unless something changes, is probably going to be a mainstay in my tournament lineup. Um, Interesting. It's a very flexible, strong deck. And I think the decks that beat TF Nami, like Pantheon, uh, I don't think we're going to see like a ton of in tournaments. It's good into like these aggro decks because you can build up a board, you have red card, you have pings, right? Um, I've, be I've beaten the aggro burn deck so many times with like Nami spell. Just like gaining four life, it's so insane. You pick it up off con, yeah. uh, conchologist, trinket trade, second Nami, whatever. Um, I really like the deck. Uh, and then I'm like, if I were to just play the best decks, if I wanted to build the best lineup, it might be Ari Ken and Absolver, Darkness for me, uh, TF Nami. But I will probably, if, if you had another tournament and it was a serious tournament tomorrow, I would bring the same lineup. I think I did as Room Terror Academy. It felt really good. Uh, for Max's tournament, however, it is a charity tournament. I'll probably bring some more fun stuff. Um, Fair enough. But I don't know what that I don't know what that is yet. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the boat where like I can play Ari Ken and Absolver, but like I haven't played Ari Ken and Go Hard very much. I haven't played uh, Twisted Fate. Nami. Nami. Yeah. I haven't played Darkness. Uh, so like most of the decks. Um, that are like, but you just listed. I like just haven't played any of them. Um, but a lot of the decks I have put a lot of reps in are like the stuff that got like pushed out, like Lee Sin Zoe or Plunder or Thralls. Uh, those are the decks that I put a bunch of time in. So, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know where I'll end up. I'll probably just like throw together three decks I'm comfortable with and be like, boop, have a good time. Maybe um, like one tournament <laughs> that you're playing in until like the changes. So, if that, yeah, it's if, just the charity. Um, yeah. But anyone that's trying to do well, I think just, yeah, go with your comfort picks, mm. try to be solid or just like, also, I think you're nuts for not, uh, for trying to like go into RE, uh, go hard, Kenan. Hard. I just like, but like, <clears throat> try to play into the Absolver version. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like I, I like you, like if we played each other, you just didn't ban rule. We like, yeah, I'm going to come after your RE Kenan. I'd be like, deal. <laughs> yeah. Bring it. <laughs> Let's go. Bring Let's it go. on. Yeah. No, I'll I get see that. you out there. You got to beat me twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good luck with that. Because uh, that deck's like... It's very strong. It's just damn powerful. It's just damn it's powerful, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, yeah, you could definitely have edges against it. But it, I feel like it's one of those cases where, like, like Plunder was the same thing. I, like, soft-targeted mm -hmm. Plunder and then just, like, lost round nine of Seasonals think, against Plunder with... I think the difference is that the decks that get to, like... The decks I'm bringing are just, like, not just good because they're favored into Ari. No, for sure. But you could still ban Ari. It's I could like still ban Ari. Stuff. Play other stuff. And that's like a total, that's like a lineup, right? You bring Pantheon and some other shit and like you just ban Ari and say, deal with it. Um, my stuff yeah, well, I think, a lot, I, think most, I think most lineups are on the ban Ari. Uh, uh, no, not from Rotary Academy. Plan, it no? looks like most wanted to play against it with a lot of Spires and Pirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we should, we should caveat, Rotary Academy very specific. You're playing, you're, you're three exactly. members of a team, yeah. and you know exactly you're playing against three members of their team. Mm -hmm. So, like, different. Uh, yeah, very, very different. It's like, you know your opponent, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, compared to an open tournament like yeah. ours, where there'll be hundreds of players, and you're going to have to play a whole smorgasbord of things. Ban already can. Totally with you. Dan. Yeah. Totally with you. Um, okay. Anything else about tournaments? No, I think that's good. Or thoughts? Uh, if you had to make an aggro lineup, what do you think it would look like? Spiders. Because I know we said spiders. I don't. Th I don't love pirates. No, I think pirates I like it as a deck. I don't love it. I don't love it right now in the meta. Mm -hmm. the, the straight burn ones are just like guy, guy, guy. Not so good. Like I you I'd, like. I think I'd rather I want... play Draven Rumble. Yeah, pirates. And I mean, then I'd that... play Yordle in arms. Yeah, that I'd be interested that in. Very strong. I like that. A little bit more, uh, and then also you could just bring Ari Kennen, yeah, just slot, slot that in. It's TF is, yeah, Deal with it. yeah, it's just a really good deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever, <laughs> I guess you haven't done this, but I've definitely at some point brought in a deck that, uh, like a Zero Relia that I had no reps on, and was just like, they're just gonna ban every time, don't care, just slotted uh, it top into my lineup. Two of the last seasonal, I brought Zed Poppy Rally, I don't play. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. I'm never playing this deck, and if I do get to play this deck, I'm just going to kill you with it. So, like, whatever. <laughs> deck was so busted. Uh, fun times. I played, uh, I, okay. I played, like, 10 games on ladder with it total, and I was like, oh, I don't need practice on this. <laughs> 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 They're going to ban it. Yeah. Win with it, whatever. Yeah, deck is good. Um... Okay, next up, we're going to talk a little bit about year, a little year in review for us. We, uh, which is quite wild. Uh, literally, last New Year's, we did not know each other. Um, I forget when I first saw your first stream, though. I love that I have one of the first sub badges you do. in your stream. The one and whenever I chat badges. in there, I, I see it. Yeah, one of the founder badges. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's, I don't know, something about that. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Okay, so going way back, how... What was the first thing I like wanted to start? I remember I wanted to start a testing group because I'm like, I gotta get better mm -hmm. and I need a team. Yeah. And so I reached out to you yep. and Z Turtle. And I think what am and I? What it, am Kever? I? Yeah. Kever. Was it was it post no and Did it, I say push me? And it was push me after. I think it was push me after. I don't know, but it was it was only like a few people, and it was very like informal. Just hey, you yeah, want like tests? Just... Like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have any more tests. And me. yeah, and we literally just uh, Kevin really jumped on it at first. He was pretty helpful. I remember like mm -hmm. throwing up some like spreadsheets and stuff, and like because uh, he comes from that magic background like us, where you like you know you put in the work. Um, <clears throat> and so let's see, this was after the first seasonals. Yes. And so we were coming up to the second seasonals, mm -hmm. and we needed to test yeah, it. Because, like, I, um, I mean, I was just a dude. First seasonals. Yeah, you got, you got two. number one. Number one. You got number one on the ladder. Uh, after first seasonals. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, I top 32 thought, maybe I should take this a little more seriously, and then was climbing up the ladder, and that's when my friends convinced me to start streaming. I mean, they've been pushing me. Well, I could have swore you had it after first seasonals before second seasonals. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Confused. First okay. seasonal, yeah. top 32, lost round one. Um, right. And I never did not stream or anything. I was a nobody. I mean, and then I was starting to climb up the ladder. Friends pushed me to start streaming. I started streaming. Thank you, friends. Yeah, right. Um, started streaming, hit rank one, made a Reddit post that went like half viral for the, uh, for the Runeterra subreddit. And then, you, know, you know something that's uh, you know something that's uh, I haven't thought about in a long time. Your name is very unique yes. and like kind of sticks in your head. And I remember when I read it at the top of the ladder, I was like, you "Won't forget huh. it." You won't forget it. You won't forget it. And then I saw you streaming. I'm like, "Hey, there's that guy." I I actually like thought about that a lot uh, because I have two like gamer tags. Um, Majin Bay is a newer one uh that i only started using for the last like couple years the the one i used before was uh, i go pp pee -pee poo poo yeah no pp pee -pee poo poo number 2 obviously <laughs> yeah yeah no, it was a uh, callus c a l l a s and the reason oh yeah so i'm so forgettable it is forgettable the reason it was callus is i thought it was clever in the lies of Locke lamora um the characters who know who they're like heist men kind of uh they have a right. pseudonym a fake name right and this character's name yes. is tavern callus so, <clears throat> nerd. Yeah, no, I thought, um, I thought it was funny yeah, to be callous. I thought that was funny, no, but I, that's cool though. But I picked Majin Bay because it sticks in your head. How long have you had Majin Bay? Two years. So, like, was it around Runeterra? Like, when you started with Runeterra, or was it before that? Was it, it was magic, or was it Dragon Ball? It's Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, yeah, it's another joke. About um, another reference, because there's Majin Buu, Majin Buu, who's the big fat pink guy, but then there's yeah. a Majin girl in Dragon Ball Fighters, who's my favorite character. And so instead of Majin Buu, uh... she's Majin Bay, right? And I named her, so my username, Majin Bay. And I thought that was really clever and funny. Um, Fantastic. But you don't forget the name. Out. So I, you don't forget the name. I picked it for that reason. Um, yeah. And I think it served me pretty well because people would remember me. Like they they go oh I remember reading your Reddit post and it was like two weeks yeah. before and there's and there's so many people's names that to this day are like top level players and I'm like I'll get them confused yeah, mixed up all the time mm -hmm. I'm like who's that or that or like I'll forget who they were or whatever I won't remember their name and like yeah yep. so good job on that well Thank well you. done so next thing uh, we got to get I put this team together we helped you win seasonal that is also true moving Shout on out Kever with the big. 
Tom Kench of Felios pivot. I remember, I remember yeah. the day we were just sitting, we were just hanging out in Discord, and he types, "Okay, guys, tell me I'm crazy." And he's like, "We take so you out put Twitch a Felios with anything. Yeah, we take out Twitch. What if face, we put the best champion in the game <laughs> and put in Tom Kench?" And I was like, "This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard." <laughs> and then yeah. he's like, "No, bro, trust." And so we started testing it and tweaking it, and it was just nuts in the mirrors. It was just nuts in the yeah. Felios mirrors. Yeah. And Lee Sin. Your guy. And Fiora. Uh, and so, yeah, we ran it. Uh, Kever had, I think, a top 16 or top 8 run. Top 16, because he ran into Raptor. Yeah. Who unfortunately beat him. And then I beat Raptor in top 8. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, went on to win seasonals, which is, like, probably the biggest achievement of my gaming career. Is Worlds top 16 rather than winning seasonals? No. No. Mm. Yeah. No. So winning seasonals. Pretty sick. Yeah, I was it was freaking dope. And uh I I remember watching it with a lot of people and uh cheering you on, obviously. And then, and then being out. like, holy fuck. Uh oh well, I don't know. I think I went over to the mainstream okay, yeah. to watch you on there or whatever. But I remember just being like, God damn, we because we had talked about launching this podcast yeah. and I was like we the next I was like, yeah. we need to launch it tomorrow. No. Yeah. Like, now. now go 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 go. The, yeah strike while it's hot, yep. <clears throat> yeah and that like really like catapulted like everything that we started doing into like high yeah, gear winning seasonals was really uh, important for us and me obviously me uh because not only is it like big deal to win and there's money but it gave me like one the confidence and two the um the safety net to pull the trigger on streaming and content creating in general i was like okay i have ten thousand dollars now I'm going to put make three months into this, right? Three, six months and just see what happens. See where I can take this. And then um, yeah. the growth at first was pretty astronomical. It's pretty insane. Um, yeah. Leave that for your YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. For I'm gonna talk, that's going to be the YouTube video tomorrow. Um, but yeah, and then... So and then one season, we'll start the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so the Patreon. Start the Patreon so the, in the Master so the Discord. Discord channel, which is insane, by the way. If you guys haven't been there, there's there were over like fifteen hundred people or something now. It's nuts, and there's just it's just constant, constant talk, and advice, and tips, and reviews of just people who just it's a community of people who just want to get better, and it's I I have to think it's the best place for that in Runeterra. I do not think there's a better. Yeah. One. Um. Our people should be crushing. Are, yeah, like so, so many, great. so many, so many people from our Discord. I'm just like, I don't know. There's like, I just assume they're just like, just people. Like, whatever, maybe they're in gold. But then you start seeing them popping tournaments. And you're like, and then they're like top. Yeah. they're like, they're coming in like top four seasonals and stuff. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, hey. And there's a there's a lot of the, people that like are gold or whatever. But then they start yeah. spending a lot of time at the Discord. whole game. They're very active, right? And they start practicing and they start learning. Um, they start talking to these other peoples who are crushers and then you start seeing them put up numbers. Um, yeah. that's so exciting. It's so cool to see that. And it feels so weird because it's something we created, but it feels like, you know, we're in it. It's, I, I want to be, I want to be more involved in it, but I feel like I just get in the way. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, it, it has, it's like a life of its own at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is fantastic. That's like the best we can hope Which for. Which is awesome. Uh, let's see. Then Worlds got announced. Oh, that was huge. And that was like, that was the big run up. Man, looking back on my year though, it's been like a constant, like, just close enough. But that's quite. Uh, like I have like multiple seven and twos when I didn't have the tie break. I had the tie break. I went six and three. Uh, I timed out. I was going to say, I lost uh, you with the timer. Yeah, that was. I lost, I lost the timer once. Uh, I also punted in that same seasonals in a match that I had no reason to lose uh when i was like five hours or something i just got overconfident in the game three and just like played too fast then the timer um and then also so not only did i not top 32 from those but that also made me not qualify from worlds because i was like one match win or something away from i was like i don't know six down on the wait list or something and so like had I just like won one more or like made top 32 which then would have given me a bunch more points easily would have made into worlds um so 
that was like the the constant or like also i remember trying to help other people ladder at the last second instead of laddering myself no good he goes unpunished no, um, i remember that i remember that yeah all that said though like look top three two is cool but but if you don't win it's like kind of whatever uh yeah. worlds would be fantastic but if you didn't make top 16 six basically because it was na oh, right you only six yeah, people from six, na yeah so they didn't make top six you didn't make any money either so it's like yeah i'd love to have all these uh all the prestige and stuff and also they built all just the, it's fun to play in those tournaments yeah. which i want to do uh but at the same time i'm like also been busy building a sweet much more media fun, empire honestly. so especially like kind of cool considering this isn't our hobby anymore yeah no right this is a lot more important um and content creation has and likely always will be the route to stable income for stuff yeah like compared this. to try to be a, a pro player to yeah. To be a pro player yeah um especially because like it's a card game and the money at the top isn't life-changing money it can be big money yeah but it's not going to like make up for a year or two salary right unless you win like worlds. yeah um totally yeah so it's the fun part though. it is the fun it's the part, part that i love so, doing the most yeah. and like the so, windfall is fantastic like i can't complain right yeah um i think over this last year i made twenty thousand ish in prize money which is like nuts um, but considering how much was given out, like, yeah, given you, out got a, you, yeah. you got, you, you got like a lion's share of it. Yeah. Lion's share. Um, now I remember we had swim on the podcast and I remember saying that, like, I don't think that that's repeatable. Um, you'd have to spike really hard again. Like, I don't think I can repeat this. Um, yeah. Well, cause the thing is that most of the tournament, most of the prize money comes from first, first place, place at season or, nothing. or yep. worlds, yep. but we don't know about next year yep. though. Might, uh, yep. Might get spicier, which is you know, fingers crossed, what we're hoping yeah. for. First place in seasonals and worlds makes up for seventeen thousand of that twenty thousand dollars, and I've topped almost every single tournament they've had. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's why I say it's. I don't think it's repeatable. But excited to see what's on the horizon. Uh, worlds was fun, a little stressful. Uh, there was top sixty four, right, which was like the world's qualifiers or the world's open, whatever you want to call it, and you could either four zero, or you could win through losers bracket. And I lost round one. Uh, I lost round one, so I had to go seven and zero. It's wild. Uh, yeah. You know what's you know what's strange though? It's like looking at, like looking at it. It's like that's so fucking hard. It's, it's like pretty hard. It's like and it's the top sixty four people 64 basically NA. Yeah. from NA, yeah. which which is basically the top sixty four players in the world, right? Because we all know. Hey, NA hey, is the best. get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I could just it feel a bunch of our I listeners from NA around because of league. around the world to be like, Ugh. but Brazilians up top. Brazilians are yeah, they're pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty great. Um, anyways, anyways, against very tough opponents, yeah. uh, you had to rattle off seven wins in a row. Though, so, you know what's strange? Like when you're oh one, it's like oh yeah, you're, you're screwed. I never for a second actually thought that you were like out of it. I was never like really worried because like you got kind of like you ran kind of bad in really the first round. round one, yeah. And I was like, you know, like that's fine. Yeah. Like I think I thought you were playing really well and I thought your decks, your deck selection was really good. So I was like, I was really confident I, the whole way. I through. feel the same way. I lost round one. And if you'd have asked me what my odds were of making it, I'd have told you like 50%. Yeah, knowing I had just seven zero through the best competition, I felt I felt so good about my level of play, and then I felt so good about my deck selection. I brought like Sivirox on Demacia. Uh, I was on Caitlyn Draven Tribeam because I correctly assumed no one is going to bring Scion, and then yeah. the third deck I cannot remember. <laughs> Honestly, uh, uh, it was Nami. Yeah, it was Zoe Nami. You're right. It was Zoe Nami. Yeah. And I was super, super confident with that lineup. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed playing it. And so, yeah, top 16 worlds. Uh, unfortunately, missed top eight. Had a pretty unlucky streak, I feel, in top 16. Like, you know, you're playing against the absolute nuts players, but there was a lot of games. Like, I was playing Scion games and just never drew Scion. Um, yeah. A lot of that happened. Yeah. Also, you took off like a week 
I took off weight, so I wasn't before. ready. I definitely wasn't ready. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was losing good. I, I think. Just, I think if you don't take that week off, I think you don't even play slime. I don't probably. play that. I, lineup, probably... yeah. I basically just took yeah. what Ami's word for it. He's like, "This is the best lineup," and I went, "Okay, you put it in the practice. I haven't been here." Um, yeah. Well, given the information that we had, yeah, also, yeah, like, yeah, uh, I probably would have played something. Um, yeah, I, I, my entire lineup would have been different. For sure. Yeah. So this year, when they announce Worlds, make sure no vacations. Section, no vacations. No, vac yeah, no vacations. No vacations. Um, vacations after. Yeah. Lots of time after. I was very happy with my top sixteen finish, though. It sucked for the oh, day. Oh yeah. Right. You know, for that day, you're like, God damn it. You still banked like seventy five hundred or something. Seventy two hundred. Yeah, like seven thousand. Um. Yeah. Which doesn't suck. So I mean, it does not suck. And like you know, you got to finish top sixteen in the world. Like it's okay, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah. and the 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 coverage of of Worlds of the top sixteen was. So it good. Was so it was good. The yeah. best viewing experience I've ever had watching maybe like any tournament ever. Yeah. At least card like games. I've watched some really good definitely, games, definitely, yeah. definitely card games. Yeah. It's, it's hard to compare against other it's hard to compare against others other mm -hmm. like games. Uh but card games, like it was so good. And like it still could have been even better too. Like there's still room for it to grow. What made it so good was the high level competition. And the super thrilling games. Yeah. No, like, games it was just every insane. game. Like, every was game. So yeah. insane. So much play to it. Thank God they had that hot fix before, too. Oh, my God. Shout out yeah. to Riot. Yeah. Made it so good. <clears throat> uh, um, also, the pod structure, I loved. So cool. Uh, I do not yeah. want to see anything like that for seasonals. No, you can't. I you can't. only want it for something like Worlds. The biggest tournaments should have a group well, structure. Hold on. I don't love single win though for top thirty. No, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. So sucks. why, why, why could it not be a pods first to top eight or no, something? It could, it could with like a round robin. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, no, I, I could, I could. It's exciting. That. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. But I, lo I loved it for worlds, and I'm hoping to see it would make, something like that again. It make coverage a lot more fun it and makes exciting. It exciting. You have stuff to talk about besides who won and lost, and you have yeah. stuff to think about, which is honestly, in my opinion, way more important. Um, like if you were watching Twitch chat because you were there, you were in a stream, you just see yeah. everyone's just going off about, oh well, if this person wins, then this person could be this person, and then they get in. Well, who's who's making it in on Group B again? And and it's just, it's yeah. really makes it adds yeah. to the level of excitement mm -hmm. for sure. I just didn't say any words and just gestured a bunch. I was like, it is. Yeah. I, know? I, but I felt it. I got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, long story short, Worlds was fantastic. Had huge viewership, also. Um, sure, some things went wrong in yeah, the qualifying yeah. phases. <clears throat> um, those can obviously, yeah, sorry, Kev. Uh, rip. Those can obviously be fixed and will be fixed and you be fixed. But, like, high level, big money, top player Runeterra was, like, by my estimation, like, huge success. Okay. And I really hope. That the people at Riot that make these calls saw it that way. Also, um, I don't know how you wouldn't, because man, it was like how many concurrent? It was like tens of thousands of concurrent. Did we have like it was like yeah, we were hitting forty like thousand or something, at least at peak hours. Um, yeah, we also got um, lucky. I will say, um, we had we had big names make top sixteen. Uh, Alan, fair. Alan, myself. Even even like what am I, she who these are yeah. like pretty big names. I it's caught it now. SEA guys. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it was very. No, I'm not going to say that like people wouldn't have watched, right? If it if like Alan didn't make it, but like I think that definitely contributed, um, to like the hype. People want a little bit, to root for a little bit. Yeah. Were you guys were you guys streaming your own stream also? No, we weren't allowed to. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm super hyped though for more tournaments yeah. like that. Like, you know, there's gonna be more. We're gonna get the announcement sometime soon. I think competitive play Very has also exciting. proved that we will continue to see the same names at the top. That's what makes it so good. Yeah. I've gone to this before. I don't want to go on a tangent about this, but that's what separates it from other games is that you can build stars mm -hmm. and you can build um what do you call those uh like narratives, narratives. Yeah, and have and ha yeah and have the stories rather than like magic where it's like you could have the same whatever it is top 50 people run the same tournament 10 times and get just, just totally get different top eight yeah, yeah. every single because they're all so close and the game is also close but with Rutera, there's a lot of room 
to maneuver. And, I think uh, I think the the lineup, like the best of three format with three different decks, gives you a lot more of an edge to be gained than just one deck in a sideboard. Yes, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes. Uh, anyways, more though on the year. Uh, we also got into uh, for those that can't see the reading at home, the league partner program, uh, which has been super sweet. Nice hat, bro. Um. And they uh, spoil us. Uh, they give us all kinds of cool stuff and do all kinds of awesome things with us. Um, I'm really uh, thankful that we got in. And I hope that more people get in. For anyone that's also a content creator, uh, I was super jelly when we were on the outside looking in, being like, when did all these people yeah. get in? We do so much stuff. But, and then we got in. Whoops. Yeah, and it, it, is, it is great. But if you are looking to be a content creator or are a content creator, uh, it is not a must have. Oh no. Not even a it's bit. just like yeah. yeah. We've we've it's just cool. We've literally got some swag, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's sick. Love this. And like we get to play the but, expansion like one day early, which has happened three times. Yeah. Since they've, and they've they've been giving that they've been giving that to more people now too, I think, yeah, outside the programs nice. for sure. Which is nice. Yeah. Riot Grand Prix is also those are fun. there's lots I got invited to all kinds of cool There today. are perks. <laughs> there are definitely perks. <laughs> but it is by no means Nest the end all be all yeah yeah and uh if you're trying to get in you know just keep at it i'll just keep adding yeah, people just, get they, they just want the people who are contributing a lot to the community um that's just what they're looking for and they don't they're not always picking people up they seem to pick people up in cycles so i wouldn't like yeah. stress about it right um and then honestly the second half of the year it's been i mean world was september so it's three months a um, little more, three instances of change. And we've kind of been just kind of chilling. Path little of coast, Champions came coast. Out, which is not as big of a deal to us as maybe it is to other people. I still have not played it. It's fun, but it's PvE, so I just don't play it very often. I played it a couple times, and I was like, you know, nice, and that was it. You know, it's interesting. I recently played a little tower defense game, uh, and I actually quite enjoy tower defense I games, tower and that's PvE. Yeah, weird. Weird, hey? How we, like, wow, don't like games. PvE. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um anyways uh yeah that came out I, I hope people loved it i hope it brought people in because it wasn't for me and i'm just sitting here waiting for that competitive announcement white knuckle announcement and you want them to change draft it did however oh god yeah. it did however give us time to work on other things like yeah uh, the website and maybe if which... there was a bunch of stuff we honestly wouldn't have yeah um, Oh god! If there was a bunch of exciting stuff going on, like tournaments to qualify for, things go like, We're yeah. This. And no, it took so, it took a lot of time. Uh, mostly my time. No, I was gonna say 100. Um, like hats off, Jason. Uh, he made the whole thing happen. I was pretty against it actually. Um, yeah. At first, I'm, I'm used to that though. Basically, basically, basic it's most I'm things. Though. I'm like, what if I just hand you money? You're like, yeah, but I have to pay more tax. On it. what? Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> with that money? I have yeah. like files. Oh paperwork <laughs> i have to find somewhere to put it i have to go to the bank awful dude miserable i'm gonna get covid <laughs> um <laughs> anyways uh yeah looking back on it now though like i already it's only been three months that it's been up i already take it for granted i'm like yeah of course so i'm like all i can think about is the stuff that needs to be fixed on it yeah. and how much needs to be better but like three months That's ago wild. it was three an months. idea three months yeah and um random aside we're we're hitting uh you know, six figure digit view counts. We're getting hundreds of thousands of views monthly now, yeah. which is uh, We're pretty awesome. Between like five and 8,000 views a day, um, which is pretty insane. And like five and 8,000 views a day is a lot of views. It's an insane amount of views when your website's only been up for two months. For a brand new website. It's like actually yeah. nuts. Um, yeah. When we've been looking, like yeah. you've been shopping around a lot for like advice and out networks and stuff. And uh, that number has been blowing some minds, I feel like, when you give people our information. They're like, how long has this site been yeah. up? Two years? And you're like, oh, two months. And they're like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> there was literally like an application process where it was like, what year did you publish your site? And it just stopped at 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, two two months ago? Yeah, we hit the other qualifications. Yeah, it's pretty funny how that is. Yeah. Um, if you haven't been to the site, Go to the site, check it out. It's really cool. Um, we have some really cool stuff. Like, obviously, we talk about it a lot. But my favorite is obviously the matchup table. Just having somewhere to go for the actual table of matchups 
that tells you what beats what is so nice. And then the best of three band helper is so sick. Where you put in your three decks and your opponent's three decks and it tells you not only the grid of like the matchups, but what your uh, what your ban should be based on that. Now, you have to take into account what you think your opponent should ban as well. But it's a helpful tool that uh, even I use. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we have all kinds of more awesome stuff like you know, like three months in just three months in yeah. uh and more stuff coming in 2022 2022 is gonna be big super years. exciting yeah. yeah uh and like that's that's wild it's like i take it for granted already yeah. and like man i i did most of it by myself uh and like i have no experience whatsoever creating websites which you could probably tell if you're good at making websites um though i've got a lot of compliments on it yeah. like um even from like you know people that are uh coders or talented or whatever they're like damn you did a good job yeah I, uh I don't so, think you did it they're like wow like <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah i've got lots of lots of comments from people saying they thought it was like professionally done whatever um again it's not and there's a lot of things wrong with it's it work in progress. but <laughs> Two months. it's a work in progress think, okay. and it's like now that we have it so it's just so cool it's so fun. Uh, there's like so much we can do with it. Uh, the community that's, I got to thank all of our writers yeah. and um, all of the guys that volunteer helping us do editing, um, who we will be paying as soon as we can afford to. As soon as we, <laughs> um, uh, I was going to say, as soon as we get ads on the site, which should happen here really soon. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we had, we had some AdSense ads, but they don't pay very much. Uh, and we've just, we got, uh, approved by a larger ad network. So we can actually get some like, hopefully better paying ads that are, uh, hopefully going up maybe even in this coming week That'd be cool. could be, uh, yeah. could be good to go. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, the rest of the rest of the year has kind of just been like, I've been gone. Yeah. It's been holidays. It's and... just been a nice little relaxing bit. And then I think, uh. When the new year starts, starting hopefully with this this patch, and we're going to kick off pretty hard. I do believe that next year will be a year that we look back and be like, remember when? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even oh, even yeah. now, like you're saying, taking stuff for granted. Like even now, I consider myself a streamer, a content creator, right? Like when a year ago, I didn't do any of that. Um, yeah. And now it's just like who I am. It's what I do. And next year, I feel like. We're gonna be like, oh, remember? Yeah, remember when we were, remember when we were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't make a website. Remember when we like did this? Yeah, I think I think it'll be really fun. Yeah, it's very very exciting. Also, just for the game, mm -hmm. uh, I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us in 2022. We were talking about this before we hit record, uh, but they plan like way ahead in time. Like when uh, Ruben came on the podcast, he was talking about how when the game launched in like beta. He was working on Sharima, which came out like six months later. Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, they don't, they don't just do things, uh, like willy nilly. Like they typically like they plan and that's why everything's so good and polished and like everything, like, you know, they, so they get so many things, right? Not everything, but so many things, right? Because they do do the work. They do do all this planning and you know, we, ha and they don't talk about anything. So it gives us this like feeling of dread sometimes. Because we're like, it's just radio silence. They're like, nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. Little do we know, there's hundreds of people working in the background on things. And so, like, you know, there's been nothing on competitive since. When did we get that announcement? Was it September or maybe October? Yeah, October when October, they were like... Yeah, of last year. And they were like, yeah, they were like, we're going to go back in the lab, sort all this stuff oh, out. Oh, uh, and uh, like, yeah, yeah. No, I think it was October. Because Worlds was September. And then yeah. they basically said, we're just going to have seasonals the next, like, seasonal or two. And then we'll let you know after that. Yeah. So sometime in the next, like, I don't know, one, two, three months at the most, but sometime at the beginning of the year, uh, we'll get the layout for what competitive is going to look like. And I'm cautiously optimistic, but like, cause we don't hear anything on it. It's like, oh, I don't think anything's actually happening, but like, yeah, no, they're obviously doing work. All they do is do work. Those guys are like freaking animals uh the amount of stuff like look at all the games they launched at the same time and they're all freaking awesome yeah, all really like most most people can't launch one awesome game mm -hmm. and like have it like be successful let alone just like a bunch of them at the time and they got like the fighting game coming the mmo game coming they did arcane like that's insane so the stuff that they can do and have done is just like mind-blowing um 
And so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that, uh, that we're going to get some good, good stuff in 2022. Um, speaking of goals and stuff though, I got a freaking top 32 of seasonals already. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I think honestly, it's um, more, you've just been hitting the bad end of variance than anything else. Yeah. And I mean, let's be real. I haven't, I haven't been putting in yeah. nearly as much work as I, uh, should to kind of expect certain results and stuff like i phoned it in a lot of time the last two seasonals i went seven and two i was seven and one i just i rolled off the couch and like asked us know, for a lineup basically deck. yeah yeah i was like what if i do this one like, and this nope. one and this one do this nope. okay what if i do this one and this one and this one to be fair i came up with the lineup that you guys then ran in top 32 yes. yeah, you did. um and so that's the thing though right like how can i you know, on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, you guys got up the ladder and I didn't, so I didn't pull up like, mm. But on the other hand, like, what do you, what do you expect? Do you have to go 8-1 when you, like, don't put in a lot of time and testing? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really not unhappy about it. Like, my results are, like, fine. If anything, like, going 7-1 twice was like, oh, yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm fine yeah. at this game. I can do this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I also look forward to is, you know, perhaps the website and other things we're doing start making more money. And other people can start doing a lot of the legwork that I currently do. Uh, maybe having more time to play the game would be dope. Yeah. That would be fun. Especially for, like, big ones. Like, I don't know, Worlds. I try to go big for, like, Worlds or whatever. Or if there's even, dare I dream, multiple large tournaments like Worlds. Oh, well, man. Two. I want two. <laughs> I want two. Two would be nice. If we get, they have two, if we get two, that would be... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two would be sweet. Or I guess they have seasonals, which is the other thing. It's just up that prize money. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Um, my goal is I want to be the first two time seasonal winner. Uh yeah. Cement that. Uh, and then honestly, most of my other goals are not player related. They're content creator related because I still think yeah. that's more important. Uh, and I totally, totally always think that. Um, I want to continue growing the YouTube. I've been posting videos almost every single day since july now uh and have seen quite a lot of growth i think i'm at yeah almost fifteen thousand subscribers like 14 i remember trying to convince you to do youtube too you're against and that I was also like, nope. uh, i was like this is so much work <laughs> i made one video and it took me nine hours <laughs> um because i like i did the thing where you like cut the pauses between your like sentences I was like, oh, my God, this is oh. So bad. <laughs> you know you know there's a plug in that i'll do that automatically yeah, for well, you i just don't even worry about it um now yeah, now my editing is like i just cut the space between games slam them together slap a transition on there and export it and like that's it good to go but i needed something like that i needed something sustainable that i could do every single day because it's it's a responsibility and it's part of my job but like even now it takes from start to finish it takes two hours probably and then another hour of like touching up um for things like you know i have to i have to be exporting it i have to come up with the title the description which is like more important than people think um, and then I also have to find the idea and then learn the deck. It's a different yeah, deck tough. every day. And th that's like, that's like the harder part, hardest part. Yeah. Honestly, the hardest part of every video is figuring out what to play. Um, yep. and so I want to keep doing that and I want to grow that. I'd like to hit 50,000 subscribers in the next year, which I think is totally doable. I hit 15 in the first Very six doable. months, whatever I can do. I can do 35, um, 35 in the next year. And um while subscribers is a nice metric the number that actually matters to me is money <laughs> right like um i don't want to sound like some greedy sellout but i have to make a living and i'm currently Li living is living is nice yeah. and we fucking like, like we ate crumbs food. over the last year um i make enough to get by but i just rent a room from a friend and my like all my costs are super super low uh you'll see in my YouTube video coming out tomorrow, that's the plan is it's going to come out tomorrow, is I'm going to talk about all my stuff, all my, like, how much I make on YouTube, how much I make on Twitch, all that kind of stuff. Um, I would like to see pictures of the old car and the new car. Oh, I Can still have the old the car video? right outside. They're sitting right next to each other. Dude, you got to get those in the video. Bad. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I would like to have a more, to get to the point where I'm having a more comfortable living and um, and not just, like, stay alive but like getting by alive. yeah i don't want to just get by uh if i'm just getting by i need to i'll, I'll have to quit um i'll go back to flight school yeah. or whatever because that's not how i want to live my life um i have a big i want to like you know retire without worry at some kind of 
age and for that i need to be putting away a lot of money and, just yeah. want to pop some bottles off of my uh timo themed yacht that sounds okay fantastic not the timo themed yacht no big that deal. sounds bad what you could pick so many better champions than that oh i think there are better champions <laughs> if you say so but yeah that's mostly my goal is just to grow the content creation and i think a lot of that is going to come not just with me personally but with mastering and Terra or whatever we decide to build right um these things i think are much bigger than me if that makes sense i mean i'm sure you understand i'm trying to explain it to everyone else right um these things have a way of making careers more than people's personal content um i'm thinking of like nade shot with 100 thieves um harris heller with stream beats um that kind of stuff yep. these things they create end up surpassing their personal content or what have you or achievements right and become something much bigger and that's what that's what i want mastering and terror to be and i think you do as well totally oh yeah 100 percent um i mean i love it the sky's the sky's the limit mm -hmm. um yeah, exciting. Okay, so really be this then. What are some things that you hope to see uh in Runeterra or from Riot? Like what would what would be like if they did these things? Uh you'd be like, man, that that was a good year. Okay. Like, that was so good for me. Like that's, uh, that's super three, awesome. Maybe top three things. Sure. Uh these top are three. me personally. Yeah. One, more fleshed out competitive scene. Not fleshed out. Not fleshed out. I do not want the competitive scene to get flushed out. I want it to get flushed <laughs> out. I want, you know, seasonal yeah. and worlds is great. I want a little more. Um, just give me a little more. And yeah. uh, so that's probably number one. Number two is I want Gauntlet to be reworked. I want it to have a way into the competitive scene, and I want to be playing for actual stakes. I don't care if that's money or sick cosmetics. Or whatever i want gauntlet to matter qualifications for tournaments that aren't just like last chance gauntlet seasonals you know i, I want it i want it to be more important um and number three and this is super personal i want cooler cosmetics i want more stuff to spend my money on um and i think yeah i think we're getting to the point where they're going to start experimenting with that kind of stuff because now the game has been like fully released i guess you could say uh we have what one more part of the bandle city release and then all 10 regions. Do we even? I think so. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, then all 10 regions are out and they're done. And now we get creative, right? We were just playing with yeah. black, white, green, and red. We just got blue. Now what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like the, Magic reference. Magic yeah, reference. So many magic references. Um, yeah, like now. Yeah, the game's, the game's complete now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking. I, I think we we didn't mention this on the podcast, right? We felt like this was like step one, like big, of yeah, big their step plan. One, all ten regions. We just finished that. Now what? Yeah, and I think that I was talking about this on Twitch uh, as well. Is I was much more excited, like after region nine, which was Shurima, I was much more excited about the set after region ten than I was about the region ten set because I want to see what they do. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I think now is the time that they're going to start getting creative. We'll see probably more things like more card types, more experimental designs. And that is the stuff that really interests me. Yeah. It seems like the foundation, the base has been laid now and they can start building on top of it. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, I want to see, I, I mean, I want all of yours, but I also want to see, uh, if I was to name a few, like, uh, a good limited format. Yeah. Expedition um, <laughs> Sorry. Expedition yeah. Players. Um, I'd like to see, and then obviously like just the biggest of carrots, like I, I want reasons to play the game all the time, which I don't have. If anything, I climb the ladder, then I have to sit on my LP and I have reasons you to have not play the game. to not play, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so just more reasons, just give me more reasons to play the game. Cause I want to play your game. Just like incentivize me a little bit. Like give me something that I feel good about. Um, and the third thing I would like to see them do more stuff with the duos or trios uh formats like the remember when they had that no like when you actually had like you and somebody else played against two people oh like the duos lab yeah i hated that <laughs> yeah i was not the biggest fan uh but i thought it was cool and interesting mm -hmm. uh and if they could get it to work like for instance i wouldn't mind seeing both boards even i don't know if you could do that but uh, I don't know. 
I, I want them to keep working on it yeah. and keep trying I that. Because I think if you can get like duos or trios working, um, or even like five on five, I, I think it'd be really interesting. Uh, TFT um, just had a duo thing released, uh, and it's that. really good. It's really How's that work? So basically, you play as like, you just play a normal game of TFT, but there's four groups of two instead of eight individuals. Uh, and uh, so okay. every like couple rounds, you get an item which lets you send a unit and it's attached items to your teammate, right? But my favorite okay. part, so like you can be grabbing stuff for each other's composition and then send it to them later. Yeah. Like build an item for them and send it. And I like that. Yeah. But the coolest part for me is that if you win really fast and my game's still going on, your guys portal into mine and help me out. Yeah. All of them? All of the ones that are left. So that's like super unfair. It's like yes. super broken. Yeah. Well, but it happens to everyone, right? Yeah. Like eventually theirs will come in also potentially. Yeah. And you're not always playing like, so if group one is us and group two is the ones we're playing, um, we might not, we're probably not both playing against group two. I'm playing against a group three person. You're playing against group two. Right. Person. So sometimes you both will get help. Right, like, yeah. like you're playing a game. I finish, I win. My guys jump in, but then their guys jump in, and we're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> right, like it, it makes it really interesting and fun. It's, it's pretty wild. It is wild, and it uh, opens up a lot of interesting things. Like maybe you need time to scale, so I go for like an early game stompy copy. That's not a word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that way, I can just like steamroll people and then get over and help you and trust you to try to carry them later. You know, just like interesting stuff. Yeah, like I love stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, it's very, it's very cool. And so, I think really what we're trying to get there is like it's the social aspect. Yes. It's that part of like uh, paper card games that we kind of miss in digital, and that's why I liked it so much. Was that it did give these like you're not just playing by yourself anymore because the end of the day, like, it was always it was always by yourself at the end of the day. You're always playing the tournament by yourself. I think the problem yeah, with Duo Slap for me was that it felt like I was just playing a game next to a friend. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, that's why that's why I say like just keep going. Yeah, just keep like because I felt I felt like it was interesting though. Yes. It was very interesting. And like they, there were some things I did like about it, like sharing of like the the drops or whatever, the like the extra weapons you got, mm -hmm. deciding how to split those up. I thought that was like a like a cool, unique thing to have in a card game. Um and so yeah. Just to, like keep trying stuff like that because this is cool. All right. Well, was... anything else for us as we wrap up? Uh... Happy New Year, everybody. Happy uh, New, New Year, Year us. everyone. At the moment. The last podcast of 2021. I can't believe it's already 2022. I thought it was 2022 years. three months ago, I'm going to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I thought it was 2022 <laughs> for half of this year. And people were like, what are you expecting to see in 2022? And I was like, because I felt like 2020 lagged on for forever. Yeah, no, time hasn't really and existed thought, for a few years. It has been a wild one out there. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up here. We thank you all so much for listening to us all year. Uh, we got lots more awesome content coming for you guys next year. Uh, and be sure to watch out for our one-year anniversary because we're going to have some cool giveaways and fun stuff for you guys as well. All right, that's it for us. Have a great new year. See you guys in 2022.